Hey, what's up everyone? So today I'd like to share with you an uplifting indie game story. The tale of how a solo indie game developer using an unorthodox and highly unusual launch strategy sold over 35,000 copies of their game in their launch window. And that number is most certainly still climbing. So the game in question is called Chill Aquarium. It's one of these relaxation type games where you can populate your aquarium with different fish. The game was made and self-published by solo game developer Ben Reba, who on Reddit posted that the game took him about two years to make. He also mentioned that he didn't spend any money on advertising or ads because he didn't even think the game would make any money and he didn't want to have any budget outside of the development costs because he didn't want the game to go into the red. Yet here we are, tens of thousands of copies later and hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales, enough to bankroll the next game. So congratulations, Ben, you did it. You won the indie game lottery. So what was this unusual launch strategy that Ben rolled out to find this success? Well, in the indie scene, we have this understanding and cautionary mantra, do not release your indie game on the same day as large AAA titles or any game with any hype behind it. And the rationale is, those major releases will steal the media spotlight, they'll clog up social media, and generally captivate players' attention during that period. And importantly, they'll clog up the new and trending tab on Steam. And indie devs recognize that if you have any chance of success releasing a game, you have to get on that new and trending tab. So it makes logical sense to avoid those periods when launching a game. So when Starfield, one of the most highly anticipated games of the year, was due to launch, you better believe that all the other indie devs launching cleared the path. All but one. That's right, the developer of Chilquarium took a strategic gamble and launched on the same day as Starfield. The result? Well, Chilquarium, the humble indie title, was on the front page of Steam for eight straight days, side by side with Starfield, getting all the attention. Thousands upon thousands of sales. Under typical circumstances, a game that hits the featured lists will get pushed out just by the daily churn of games being released, but not in this case. Ben also revealed to the community that he had about 5,000 wishlists going into launch. So that's a pretty good number, but it's kind of on the low side of what is typically regarded as being enough to get on those featured lists, which sits at about seven to 10,000, but it's all relative to who you're competing with. And because there was no other competition, the threshold was much lower to make that list. This situation reminds me of the 2002 Winter Olympics where Australian speed skater Bradbury was trailing the pack in last place, only to win after the leading pack crashed and cleared the path to a gold medal. Yeah, Time and time again, marketing has shown itself to be highly counterintuitive, and the best advertisers understand this and often use unorthodox strategies and campaigns. And this is a perfect example of that. And notably, the game was self-published. Now that's important for two reasons. One, Ben doesn't have to share the profit with any publisher. And two, I'm not sure a publisher would have gone for this launch approach. Typically, when you have a publisher, they will be the ones who kind of select a launch date for you based on their market experience. But I've got a feeling most publishers will probably play it a bit safe. I also want to acknowledge and shout out Chris from howtomarketyourgame.com who did a fantastic write-up on this topic. He even reached out to Ben for some comments. This is what Ben had to say. I got into popular and upcoming roughly 30 hours before release. This resulted in 1,900 wish lists in a single day, which was mind-blowing almost six times more than I'd gotten on a single day in the past. I pressed the launch button at noon on Wednesday and asked a few people in my Discord server to leave a positive review so I could reach the 10 review threshold as fast as possible. I wound up on new and trending 20 minutes after launch and stayed there for a full week. And of course, success begets success. And the circumstances of this launch are further bringing more awareness and attention to the game and even more sales. So Ben, you are saluted. You've done very well here. It's just really encouraging and exciting to see an indie game pop off like this. But I don't want to make it sound like this launch was like face rolled or just all chance because it's not. Chill Aquarium is a very well-made game. It's highly polished and I'm not sure just any game launching at that same time would have had the same success. 
And in a Reddit post, which I'll link in the pinned comment, Ben outlined all the different strategies he tried. But ultimately, it was this launch day factor that made all the difference. So what now? Should we all just start <laughs> releasing our games to align with all the AAA launches, hoping to replicate this? Because I'm sure plenty of indie devs are going to be trying to do that now, to the point where it'll not work anymore. Because this only works if nobody else is doing it. So in the end, we might be left with the best strategy being simply to launch our game and cross our fingers. It's always going to be a bit of a gamble. We can try to control all the variables in a launch, but there's always some factors that we can't account for. And I think Chill Aquarium had the combination of right timing, right game design, right amount of polish, and importantly, a really good price point. Marketing is a tough nut to crack. It's like a golden goose if you can unlock the secret formula. And it's easy enough to buy things like ads and do kind of social media marketing. But to really unlock those secret pathways, like in Snakes and Ladders that have you shooting up to the top of the board, they're hard to lock down. And again, often very counterintuitive. As a thought experiment, let's say the Elder Scrolls 6 is about to launch. This is going to be a huge launch, the successor to Skyrim. Would you risk launching your game on the same day as this? Well, maybe if your game is completely different, different style, different genre, different theme. But what if your game is like a indie clone of Skyrim or The Elder Scrolls, like a cheap knockoff? Well, that could then be a disaster. On the other hand, an Elder Scrolls launch might create an appetite in the community for games of that style and theme. It enters the game as zeitgeist for a period, so it actually might be a favorable time to release a game like that. The outcome will never be known until the outcome is known, only through the power and clarity of hindsight. No crystal balls, unfortunately, so it's always going to be a bit of a gamble. But one thing is certain, timing is everything. You can have the same event take place at two different times and have dramatically different results. And as an interesting comparison, another relaxation type aquarium game similar to this launched a few days ago, only this one is 3D. And it was released by a really well-known YouTube channel with 11 million subscribers. But this comparison is a reminder that indie devs don't need to get too fancy or cute with their render pipelines and 3D high production graphics. You can have really good results with a low-fi art direction. So anyways, let me know what you think about this situation down below. If you are an indie developer and are planning to launch a game, will you now consider adopting this launch strategy or will you still opt to play it safe? It's really hard to know if this is going to be viable going forward or, or if this was a more of a one-off. Oh, and just for some quick housekeeping, last week I made the decision to shut down my channel's Patreon. It was just adding a layer of pressure and complexity that I didn't want to contend with. You know, things always get a bit complicated when there's money involved, especially when strings start to be attached. But I just wanted to thank everyone who has ever supported this channel all the way back to the start. You guys really saw me through some of the troughs of content creation. So thank you so much. You made a huge difference and your generosity will not be forgotten. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.